autism. Should we care? Millions of people all around the world are affected and diagnosed by a learning disorder called Autism Spectrum Disorder, or ASD for short. It is known to be a range of different yet similar neurodevelopmental disorders, Autism, Asperger's, Rett Syndrome, Fragile X Syndrome, and PDD-NOS. ASD comes in different forms, but it presents a unique problem. In a world of struggle, it appears that emotions and empathy are often missing, and for those whom are affected, are still in that struggling phase. Sometimes it can be very difficult with my emotions and like thought process at school and that, but then sometimes it can like slow down and be much better some other times. Well, it's not actually that bad. I made a lot of friends, and some of my friends at school, well, I'm not the only one in the entire universe who has autism. There are actually other kids around other countries who have autism, so living with, with autism is actually amazing, and I hope that the future of myself will actually go way further. It's kind of so-so. Things can get pretty weird in our house, but still. Yeah. I feel out of control of myself sometimes. Lots of people don't understand what it is. I sometimes need to get extra help at school. Unfortunately, they are known victims to those who do not approve of their differences. Yes, when I was a bit younger, I did have some bullies. But now, when I'm up in the higher grades, uh, that has almost completely, basically completely diminished now, as everybody is more um, accepting now than it used to be. Um, certainly, yes. I have faced many bullies. Yeah, I have. I've been bullied before. Yes, sometimes people tease or are rude to me. Sometimes it is even physical. Yet despite the hardships they faced, they still have some hope for what they want to do in the future. I would want to contribute to society by making um, better technologies to help people with disabilities, to make the, their uh, lives easier so they wouldn't have to stress out, out as much as, and act out as much as they are today. So, they're le so they'd be living easier, like more, like, uh, me, uh, like normal people that don't have autism. What I want to do later in my life is design new Lego company sets so that kids will enjoy their imagination so that they can go beyond throughout the galaxy. What I would also like to do in my life is be a part-time race car driver, which I has always been wishing for since I was even seven. And I would also like to be an eco-friendly video game designer. And I would also like to make computer codes and design my next future car for the entire world. I want to be able to do something involving like either in a way involving video games or music, something around those kind of things, like maybe like a, like this or a YouTuber maybe. I want to work with on the police force. I like animals, so maybe a veterinarian.
and to help them through their tough journey that is in front of them. They have ways of coping and de-stressing whenever they feel pressured and having a hard time. Yes, sometimes I watch videos online, sometimes I just lay in my bed. I, I have a punching bag, sometimes I use that. Or I play video games sometimes to release my stress on fictional characters. When I'm frustrated at school, I actually ask my teacher if I can go out in the hall and then have a nice peaceful place to stay. And then once my teacher tells me to come back in, I just do it. Or I can just take a walk around the school and then I could get off my, and then I could get my mind off of everything that the boys did to me. Well, I've been to a lot of like classes to help with stress, so I'd like do different techniques that I've been told to do, like counting to 10, taking deep breaths, things like that. Sometimes I walk away from the situation, I listen to music, play video games, or try to calm myself down. Along the way, we see that there are autistic individuals who are indeed progressing to where they want to be heading. However, it doesn't stop them from the challenges and roadblocks that they face. Yeah, to be honest, actually, I didn't, uh, when I was younger, I didn't actually even know I had a destination. It wasn't until I was diagnosed at 18, which was kind of an old age that, you know, I, you know when, when you learn that you have autism, then you know that there's a place that you have to, like, go. Because before that, I was kind of just, like, I was, like, really oblivious to stuff. Like, really, really oblivious to stuff. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, I, to me, I wouldn't say I had a destination because I didn't know where to go from the beginning. There's all sorts of challenges, like, when it, when it, whatever goal you're trying to reach. Like, again, with, with me, a lot of the times it's been no single goal, but a, lot, a bunch of just like, all right, now I'm going to focus on this, now I'm going to focus on this. And there's all been, all been all sorts of different challenges on the way to, eat, to each of those different goals. And, like, a, a big part of, like, overcoming those challenges has just been like identifying them figure out what is causing the issue and then try to deal with that as efficiently as possible just try to be like okay this is the problem here's how i'm going to solve it let's do it a lot of problems did come up people used to bully me unfortunately the school wasn't really a great help as they like to sort of have a video every year like oh yeah there's a kid in your class that has autism and then they would kind of they would announce it was me so that there was a bit of bullying that came from that and honestly what I found was the best way to deal with bullies is talk to a teacher and ignore it for as long as possible and only then do you want to really resort to anything above that and you don't want to get physical right at the start. It's definitely, you should never have to resort to violence but, and I, I'm thinking, I like to think that now schools have been getting better with that sort of thing but mm, sometimes they don't, sometimes it gets slipped by and at that point you might need to, to sort of do something to do it and generally something else I found is I like to think that you should find something as a calming mechanism. For me it was generally playing a game, aim and heck even now if I'm ever having any troubles or feeling stressed out I'll go downstairs and I'll turn on my PS3, I'll play a nice game like maybe Skyrim because that's usually a good game to get me to sort of forget about my problems or drawing also helps yet despite those challenges they have found their autism to be quite helpful for them yes oh definitely i found it has definitely helped me yes they are even very willing to give advice to those like them who are trailing behind you know, honestly, I, I think the best advice I could give is that, like, when you like when you learn that you have autism, that's that should be the starting point. Yeah, because you know, like, because I didn't, you know, I grew up thinking I was normal. You know, you know, I never knew that, like, all the you know struggling I had in school, all the problems I had trying to understand stuff was because I had autism. So, you know, I didn't, I didn't get help. You know. So I think the most important thing is to, you know, to actually like get diagnosed, you know, and, and stuff and then, you know, go from there. Whatever you're struggling with, like if, if there's something that seems to be holding you back, just take a hard look at it. And like what helped with me a lot of the time is just kind of like, again, look at the problem and think, okay, what am I good at? What, what strengths do I have? How can I apply that to fixing this problem, to solving this problem? Because no matter how you look at it, there's going to be some strength somewhere. And like, it might not be apparent at first,
but in, in some way, shape, or form, there is some strength. And, like, just try to use that as much as possible. Well, I think the best thing I could offer as advice to anyone having any trouble reaching their goals would be to keep working at it and always keep it in mind. Never forget your goals. Generally, it's nice to have something to, as sort of a, a move booster. For example, I've been having not the greatest week lately. I've fallen down a flight of stairs, headaches, but generally I like to keep something in mind to sort of keep myself going. For example, well, I'm thinking about, oh, the holidays are coming closer, there's a game I want coming out in a few days, and it's generally just nice to have these little sub-goals for yourself. Elf, to sort of keep yourself motivated, keep yourself on task, and also keep yourself with simple achievements being re released every now and then to keep you in a motivated state. Because if you set yourself with a goal for like 10 years down the line, then over those 10 years you're not going to be really motivated to do it. So it's generally better to be like, okay, for this I'll do this step, then this step, then this step. That way when you can really complete each step, it's like, oh, I've done this thing that was on my list. I can cross that off and it'll be great. So generally, as I said, if you want to strive to autism, I find it helps to keep, give yourself a goal, because as it said, autism is one of those things where you can make it work to your advantage. People with autism generally find themselves being very, liking things a very certain way and generally stick to certain things that they like. So if you keep your, so what you got to try and condition yourself to be like, I want to make myself so my autism wants me to work. And then that way you can actually get some work done. Finally, we can see that autistic people at the expert or veteran level have certainly gotten to a point of their lives where they have achieved success despite the challenges and hardships they have faced in the past. Yes, it was worth the effort because of the fact that, uh, you know, living with autism isn't easy and I've succeeded at that and so I believe that that's definitely worth the effort because for one thing I like helping other people with it. And Besides, it's just, I mean, why give up? What's the point? Yes, I getting to where I'm at was worth the effort because I was able to achieve holding down a long-term relationship as well as proving that I could graduate college with high honors as well as holding down a job in my field and holding down volunteer work in my field. They have even managed to help themselves with coping and de-stressing strategies to help them specifically. Yeah, I uh, definitely have, uh, well, I take medication, which definitely helps with it, along with, uh, you know, I try to get into routines, and routines help a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, getting used to it and figuring out Organizing yourself better is a lot easier that way. Yeah. Yes. Um, I do have sensory issues. For an example, like I have sensory issues with noise, especially when it comes to fireworks or anything that's too loud. So I have earplugs that I put in. Or I'll put them in at night, especially. And um, if I'm going anywhere that's crowded, then. I'm basically gonna have a stress ball with me and that stress ball, I can squeeze it at any time and it really helps with anxiety. And um, something that also helps me is pacing. And that helps me if I'm about to go into an overload or because I'm in a new place and I really have to observe my surroundings so I found that is something that really helps me being on the spectrum. It took a long time for me to achieve that. It took a long time for me to actually find um, to find coping strategies but it's what works for me. However, they still had so many things to learn on their long and tiresome journey to get to where they are now. I learned that, uh, you know, things aren't always easy and in some cases you, you know, have people that help you out through everything. I had a friend that's helped me out and so I've learned that, you know, if you got people that care about you, you can get through anything. I had to learn how to act in the neurotypical world and I had to learn a lot. I'm still learning actually a lot about body language. I had to learn about 
the eye contact and I had to learn to really feel out my surroundings, feel out neurotypicals, but I also had to learn how to act, what slang means, what certain slang, that's the big one. I also had to learn how to deal with sensory overload, especially out in public, because that's it's hard to deal with, it's really hard. And I also learned how to, um, still working on sitting in a restaurant, I'll find I'm gonna get up and just wander because it's like sitting for a long period of time is, it's a lot. So I've learned that along the way and I've learned about people's perceptions, how one person may perceive one thing, somebody may perceive it totally differently. No matter what type of veteran they may be, they always have advice to give to the younger and the inexperienced on how they can reach the level of success that the veterans have achieved. Look for people that can help you. I'll try to not let these things uh, stop you, just especially if you figure it out that you have it. That's the key thing too. Because in my case, I didn't realize until I was later in my high school years. So maybe don't give up and, um, you know, just try to find people that uh, understand autism and get to seek out advice from them. You have to be happy with who you are and you have to be confident with yourself. There's always going to be people who judge, but in the end, you have to do what is best for you and what helps you the most. And that's what really matters. With what you overcome, it's also what the person puts into it and to make sure that they have a support system because a support system goes a long way. Now their parents have been there for all of their lives and they certainly have their nibbles of wisdom to share with the world, especially when it came to raising them. Raising kids is very, very hard. I have two with ADHD and I have one with autism. I have to say, when we lived in Nova Scotia, there was absolutely very little support for Bryden with autism. It wasn't until we come up here to Ontario that they set him up with an IEP. Uh, they put things in place in the classroom. If he needed a break, he could just kind of get up and go for a walk. The school was a very big part of helping me understand Bryden's autism and helping Bryden to understand his frustrations, his limitations. And then my other two, without autism, you know, there's drugs involved, there's, you know, um, kids are getting into it much younger. I'm very fortunate that Bryden doesn't go in that direction. He's more, he likes his computer, he likes his games, you know, he likes to draw. So yeah, it's, it's very tough raising children. There have been times where it's been challenging Every day is something different. There are good days, there are bad days. I think the biggest thing is to take each day as it comes, not to try and look too far into the future, not to sort of get overwhelmed by, you know, all the doctor's appointments. Um, Devin last year went through having the last seizures. And so it was, you just kind of have to take each day as it comes um, and celebrate all the small accomplishments, not try and look too far into the future. And and uh, just take it day by day and sort of I sometimes let him take the lead as to how the day is going to be. No, I didn't find it hard to raise my children. I find it's a blessing to have all of them. Each of my children are incredibly different and so raising them, you raise them all differently. Having Jamal Benjamin was amazing and I've learned a lot from him. I continue to learn from him every day. Different issues, his sense of humor, what he finds funny, what he doesn't find funny, how people treat him, how me as a mom sometimes cries for him as I see how the children treat him. But I have to let him grow and develop and sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I stand at the window and I watch him play and I watch the kids run away from him. But I have to be strong and 
let him figure it out sometimes. It's hard, but I'm getting there. My answer to that would be uh, yes and no. You know, autism has challenges that come with it. So yeah, in certain ways um, it was and can be, you know, more challenging. But um, at the same time, my kids, you know, with autism are amazing and, uh, you know, they have lots of gifts that, comes with, that come with them and we never have a dull moment in our house. It's always, uh, it's always a really interesting journey. Like any parent, there was ups and downs. I found that it was um, interesting trying to raise my son Chase in a blended family. And then we had the added difficulties of him having special needs, so having Asperger's and ADHD. They also have advice for other parents who have children with ASD. The biggest thing I could say is you want to find a fantastic pediatrician. The earlier you can have a child diagnosed with autism, the better, because there's so many things you can do at home, uh, you can prepare the school for, daycares or, you know, whatever, to put pieces in place that really give them the best start. I think today we're really lucky because we do have an autism organization out there, there's support that wasn't out there five years ago, ten years ago. So, you know, we're really fortunate and the best thing I could say is get on the internet and find, you know, support for yourself because you need it. Yes, I think one of the things that um, I would recommend is telling your children about autism, letting them be part of their diagnosis. Um, Devin's very much part of the doctor's appointments. Um, the doctors talk to him about how he feels the meds are, how he feels his anxiety is, and help him sort of model the behavior as well. Um, Devin's very good at when he gets anxious to tell me, you know, what he needs and I have to be, you know, in tune with him knowing how his body feels, how his head feels, how his mind feels and let him be part of how the process is going to go. Um, I think the earlier you tell your children about the diagnosis, the better. I know Devin told me when he was around the age of eight, he knew he was different from other kids. And that he, we started reading books about autism, about how maybe some of the characteristics he has might be different from other children. It helped him be in tune with other children that had autism, that he could see, oh, that child was getting anxious. He would know to back off. Or if he see a child that, you know, needed help, he could go and he could tell the teacher, I think he needs to have time out. I think he needs a quiet space. And I think it's, you know, very important for kids to be part of the process as well. Any tips that I might have would be every autistic child is different. What might work for me might not work for another mom with an autistic child. My child has been diagnosed as high functioning autism. Some children are not. Some children are low functioning. Some children with autism are nonverbal. Some children are violent, hit, spit, pinch. I've been blessed that I don't have that. So any tips that I might have for an autistic mom out there would be touch base with your groups. Get involved with autistic groups. Get involved with moms of autistic children. Get onto social media, talk to them. Put out your issues if your children have issues. There are so many moms out there struggling with the same thing. So I would say just get out there and say it. My kid did this, my kid did that. Do you have any advice for me? And you'll be surprised how many people will come back with advice for you. I would say the first and foremost thing is uh, some parents when they find out their kids have autism, you know, initially maybe they're upset or, you know, don't really, <coughs> excuse me, don't really understand it very well. I would just say to them, just accept your child for who they are. Every kid is different whether they have autism or not. Just try to find, you know, the positive things and educate yourself as well and learn how to deal with the things that are more challenging. Just move forward. Um, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's just, a, as I said, an interesting journey and um, you know, just encourage them to take it one day at a time. I would say 
When you are raising a child with Asperger's, it's important to take care of yourself first, and then you'll be better able to manage the stressors that happen when, when you have a child, especially someone with, with Asperger's, and find as many resources as you can. It's always important to get educated and to have help and be able to ask for help and, and, and take it. I've done that in the past. Also, I would say it's important to have humor in the household and to be patient with yourself and with your child as they learn how to cope themselves. There's going to be things that work and things that don't, and you just have to keep trying and, and find out what works for them and really always focusing on his abilities. That's what I try to do the most is focus on his strengths and um, work with his difficulties but not to focus on the difficulties and just on his abilities. Give him all the opportunities that he can in life and go from there. Even advice for young ASD individuals whose parents may not be as accepting. Children need support. And if their parents aren't giving them the support that they need, I think they need to go to their teachers. Get online, look up support groups for autism. Find friends, you know? There's all kinds of people out on the internet that have autism that do reach out and, and meet other people. And yeah, it would be really unfortunate to, you know, have autism and not have the support of your family. I think with Devin, um, something that he has taught me is he says that he owns his autism and that he's very much aware of how he feels, what he needs. And I think that if parents aren't in tune with helping the children figure out what they need, their own space, um, a good idea is to find somebody at school. Devin had one particular teacher at school that we called, it was his safe teacher, that she knew that if he was having a rough day, that he could just sit in the back of the classroom. Um, there were a couple of days where he went through a lot of depression and stuff like that. So it was very hard for me to understand why he didn't want to go to school, why he didn't want to get out of bed. And she would actually call from the school and say to him, I want you to come to school, Devin. I'll be waiting by the front door. And she would wait at the front door for him to get to school. So it was really good to have another grown up sort of, if I wasn't kind of understanding, you know, what the issues were in school, she was there to be a safe person too. So I think that's really important is if there's not a parent who's as supportive to find a teacher, maybe if there's somebody else in the community, in, um, a priest or a pastor at a church or a community center is, a good, is a good for them to find another adult. Also, um, Devin's gone to a lot of teen programs through Autism Ontario, and he's found it helpful to talk to other kids his own age that kind of understand maybe what parents don't necessarily understand. And he's, he's gotten a lot of some of the being together with kids his own age that have autism as well. Not every parent is accepting of autism. Not every parent believes the diagnosis when they get it. Some parents will say, no, not my child. That can't be possible. So for the children, I think it's hard because they can't help it. They have to do the best that they can with the tools that they've been given. I would hope that as the child grows and develops, that the moms and dads grow and develop with the child. That's what I've done. And again, touch base with all kinds of stuff. There's so many services that you can touch base with. Special services at home, assistance for children with severe disabilities, Carrie's Place, there's just so many. Touch base and don't feel guilty, don't feel bad. Just get out there and say, I need help. I would probably tell them to, you know, try to find someone who is. I mean, it would be difficult, you know, as a child or a young person to not necessarily, you know, not feel maybe supported by their parent, maybe because their parent doesn't know a lot about autism. You know, I guess there would be two things. One, just maybe try to find some resources to help your parent maybe learn a little bit more and become a little more comfortable, you know, with the diagnosis and with, the, and with you know, the child. And also I would say, um, find someone who is. I mean, it might be somebody at school, it might be a counselor, it might be a teacher, you know, just try to find that one person who has your back and who can help support you. 
I think it's important for parents to be as inclusive as possible and to understand that just because somebody has the condition or uh, a syndrome, which Asperger's is, is you should maybe ask questions, be educated yourself, and also understand that children want friends regardless of what their differences are and not to be afraid because children with Asperger's are, you know, great friends and great family members and great contributing members of society. They're just as likable and sociable as anybody else um, when given the chance. Now social workers and other workers of similar jobs work immensely hard helping many individuals who are struggling with ASD. I think that every individual that has autism, whether they be young, middle-aged, adolescent, adult, they all have their own unique capabilities, their own qualities. All are different in their own ways on how they are successful in life. And when I work with children or youth, some days are challenging because they're learning skills that they don't have. Most of them lack communication skills, social skills with others, sensory overload is always a huge factor for them. So as I said, each child is different. When I work with adolescents, it's trying to teach new behaviors that have been learned. So they've learned a lot of behaviors that they shouldn't do. So teaching them the new behaviors, the acceptable and appropriate behaviors, then becomes a little challenging. But I enjoy every minute of it because not only am I teaching them, but they're also teaching me in other ways too. Even while she is doing her job, she finds out very interesting things about her clients, patients, etc. with ASD. I find that individuals with autism always have an infatuation or an obsession with certain things, whether it be video games, books, toys. So I would have to say that like, the traits that they have would be that obsessive compulsive trait. And it's not good, nor is it bad. It's just something that they perseverate over or that they really enjoy. And I find the individuals I work with, they all have a great sense of humor. Even though they find that humor is sometimes hard to understand, sarcasm is hard to understand, they still try to use humor in their own way, which I think is really awesome because it is hard for them to interpret what people are saying and what it means. But again, I think they're all individual. Everyone with autism that I've ever worked with or I've ever seen, they have their own traits that are different from each other right but still at the same time have those same qualities that i talked about before like liking certain things or their senses some of them i work with any loud sounds or if they get a hangnail it feels like they've lost a finger so certain traits like that and qualities like that i think are similar but in more times than not they're very unique and they're different in their own ways with the potential that she notices that they have she does not stop to give advice to anyone with ASD. Be yourself and don't be afraid to challenge yourself to do things that you don't think you can do because at the end of the day, you can do those things. And just because you don't know how to do them at that moment or when you're supposed to do them, you will learn. And it's teaching yourself. I didn't learn how to do things from the moment I was born. I had to be taught and I had to learn them. And if I can say anything to someone who has autism, don't ever give up because you will do it. You will be successful. And it might take you longer. It might be a harder journey for you. But at the end of the day, I have no doubt that you'll be successful in whatever you choose to do. Now we need to keep in mind that those are not the only people who have and deal with autism on a daily basis. 
In order to get a better perspective, we must take a look at some notable examples of very well-known people with either autism, Asperger's, or anything else that narrows down to ASD. Susan Boyle, British singer and a Britain's Got Talent finalist, Asperger's. Jason Zimmerman, professional Super Smash Bros. player, Asperger's. Temple Grandin, food animal handling systems designer and author. A biopic has been made about her in 2010. High functioning autism. Dan Aykroyd, known for acting in films like the Ghostbusters series, Asperger's. Tim Burton, critically acclaimed film director, Asperger's. Adam Young, multi-instrumentalist, producer, and the founder of the electronic project we all know today as Owl City, Asperger's. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, a very well-respected classical music composer, of which his music is still loved to this day, Autism. Mark Twain, U.S. humorist and author, Asperger's. Nikola Tesla, Serbian-American scientist, engineer, and the inventor of electric motors, Asperger's. Albert Einstein, German-American theoretical physicist, Autism. These people here are very good examples of what taking advantage of ASD can do. By them taking advantage of what they love doing, they earn their success in every way they went. So, what does this all come down to? It all comes down for us to realize that we can't do everything our own way, by ourselves, and without making wise decisions. Autistic people should not fear to explore the real world around us. We can't always stay within our own worlds. We must connect the real world with our worlds that we see and put them to good use and not stay huddled and imprisoned within ours. In conclusion, we must take advantage of the resources we have been offered and not neglect them, as we will never regret not wanting the services at the end of the day. And if we feel discouraged, we should not let discouragement prevent us from doing what we love to do so that we may live longer to eventually share our passions with the real world around us.